Hello everyone, today we're going to discuss the fashion industry and what does it really take to create a technical flat. Um, so whenever you're entering into really any industry, there's always going to be new language, new concepts or terminology that you will need to learn. And so therefore the fashion industry is really not an exception. So what exactly is a fashion flat? Um, a fashion flat is oftentimes referred to as a technical flat for the fashion industry, which is basically a technical drawing, kind of like a two dimensional uh, drawing that showcases cases all of the essential features that the manufacturers and the producers need to know about that specific product so that the end product reflects the designer's um, vision essentially. So this will include anything from the garment details, any kind of shaping devices, um, any trims, um, any kind of fabrication, any kind of stitches or trimming that is essential for the overall appearance of the design. And this appearance can of course be uh, referred to as, uh, you know, uh, aesthetic appearance or it can also have uh, functional uh, pieces as well. So therefore, technical flats are actually really helpful uh, for both the designers, um, the pattern makers, or in this case, the manufacturers that are going to take place uh, or participate in this product development process. A technical package is something that we actually created in the previous video, uh, so feel free to reference that. But um, it is basically an informative uh, construction sheet that has the designer's idea um, and it has the technical steps that are necessary uh, for the manufacturers to participate in in order to create the end product. So typically here the designers will include um, any kind of measurements, materials, colors, trim, hardware, grading, labels, tags, um, and any other um, essential features that are needed for that specific design. So basically the more detailed the technical package um, is, the less room there is for any error. These technical packages or these flats are usually created using Adobe Illustrator, but if you're working for a much more fancy company, they might be using Kaleido or um, other uh, relevant computer-aided design software applications. So first to get us started, please make sure that you have your fashion workspace loaded. Um, I do have a video on that as well, if you need any help setting it up. So whenever you're creating any kind of complex artwork, it's actually really challenging to keep a track of all of the items that the document will show. Um, so usually smaller items end up getting hidden behind larger items. Um, but the one way you can avoid this and make sure you stay organized throughout the way is to use the layers. Uh, now the layers kind of like behave as a um, as, as a clear folder that will contain certain type of artwork. As you can see in here, I have created, um, you have essentially three layers in here and you can rename any of the layers by just double clicking uh, on the uh, portion right here and that's highlighted and you can just name it whatever you would like to name it. You can also designate any kind of color um, or indicate if you would like this specific uh, layer to behave as a template. Uh, templates are really good usually um, as, uh, as a way to sketch over something uh, or trace over something essentially. And you can allow your, uh, cer your certain layers to dim or to lower the opacity to a certain percentage. So we're going to go ahead and get us started by uh, making sure that you are selected in this area in here that's not locked um, and it is indicating you that this is your space where you can create your code. So make sure you click right here under layers again and your code. If your layers are not turned on, again, you make sure that you have your uh, fashion workspace loaded, but you can always find every single uh, panel that you may need from the windows menu up here. So the goal for us here is to create a technical flat that is going to have a front view and a back view. And then ideally later on, you can uh, certainly apply any kind of uh, fabrication that you might like. The end product could look something like this. Now, even though we're going to work with this rather simple design and simply trace over it, uh, of course, you can get a little bit more fancy later on uh, and use this fashion croquis and um, design something uh, really original. Again, step number one is to have your fashion workspace. Step number two is to have your layers. And now step number three is to make sure that we're selected on the layer that we can essentially begin our work in. Now we're going to create this garment with only two tools. Tool number one that we're going to use in here is going to be the pen tool. And then eventually we might want to use the direct selection tool if we need to uh, make certain uh, edits. 
I'm going to go ahead and click and hold on the pen tool and acknowledge that I have a set of sub tools within this tool that can help me uh, create the project that I'm working on. Now, because I'm going to be working with this tool extensively, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and click on this um, arrow in here and just take it out so I can have it you know, closer to the overall look in here so I can uh, begin working. Now that I have actually selected the tools that I'm going to use um, extensively, the next uh, step is for me to choose the selection tool and then make sure that I have the ruler turned on. This is really important for us so that we can make sure that everything always stays up to scale and is looking proportionate. You can turn on the rulers by going to view and then scrolling all the way down to rulers and then click on show rulers. Now mine is already turned on. so. From the sidebar area here where the ruler is being turned on, I'm going to go ahead and just drag a line and this is going to be called a guideline that is going to enable me uh, to always know where the center of a specific object is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and you can again zoom in by uh, scrolling onto your keypad if you have a Mac or if you can zoom in by using the zoom tool um, located right here or also at the very bottom. So now at all times I know exactly where the center line is going to be. So the way we're going to use the pen tool is essentially click, 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 click and you have created um, a, an outline of one specific shape. Now, you can also click and hold and drag to create a specific line uh, that will be automatically curved. Obviously, you could end it in the anchor point and continue with a straight line if you prefer so. But I'll show you another quick way to go ahead and work on a lot of the shapes that are needed in here, which means that we're going to begin by clicking and dragging from one anchor point uh, to the next. Make sure that you also have your smart guides turned on so that way you can know exactly uh, when you're um, getting close to a specific anchor point. So in here I'm just clicking and releasing essentially and I'm looking for the area uh, in the back of the collar. So I'm trying to find uh, and I'm trying to match um, every single one of these anchor points in here. Okay, so now here is my uh, initial draft. Uh, obviously, it looks a little rough. Um, I will have to use the uh, anchor point tool to kind of like uh, make it a little bit more softer. But I'm noticing that when I switch back to my selection tool, uh, the item area in here has disappeared. Um, that's because I don't have any fill or any stroke. Now, you don't really need a fill whenever you're working on a flat. Uh, we don't ever want to fill it in with color until we're done designing uh, what we're looking for. But we always want to have a stroke uh, and usually we work with the color black. So make sure that uh, you change your stroke to the color black. Um, Point, one point in here is actually a little bit too strong. Usually whenever you're creating a flat, you try to stay below one point, so that way the black lines are not going to be the feature. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use the stroke weight and click uh, once and get it down to 0 0.75. Now at this point, I can go ahead and choose the anchor point tool and I'm going to make my way in the middle right here. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see. And all I'm going to do is just click and drag. Again, from the center, click and drag. So really quick, really easy. I have already created the back color. Uh, lock the back color so that way I can use the same anchor points and create the front of the color. So I'm going to, um, if you don't lock it, it's essentially going to begin erasing the anchor points. So I'm going to go ahead and click right here in this empty space um, and that's going to lock the color and make sure that whatever I'm designing next is not going to interfere with um, the specific um, design right here. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my pen tool. And again, I'm not doing anything fancy necessarily in here. I'm just clicking on each one of the anchor points that I believe are going to be helpful for me. And I'm going to go ahead and use the anchor point again, find sort of the middle, drag in a little bit. 
find the middle over here, drag in. And every time you're using the anchor point tool, it's always going to make it parallel in a way. Um, so you can use these handles to kind of like further manipulate the shape. So for example, I'd like to have this color maybe just a little bit outwards like that. Um, and then this a little bit inwards. And then I'm going to move this slightly to the upside. So that way it gives that shape that I'm looking for. Now, instead of creating the other side manually, usually within the fashion industry, we try to save as much time as we can. Um, so you're going to go ahead and basically uh, choose the black arrow or the selection tool and make sure that your item in here is selected. If it's not, go ahead and make a bounding box behind it and select it. If it's selecting the back color as well, make sure you hold shift and deselect that. Or like I said, just go ahead and temporarily uh, lock that uh, little layer in here. Um, and so what we're going to do in here is I'm just going to go ahead and click uh, right, make a right click and then make my way down to transform, reflect. And I usually have preview turned on so I can see what I'm copying essentially. Um, I'm going to reflect vertically in here and I'm going to go ahead and click make a copy. So now that I have a copy, I can go ahead and drag it on this side and make sure that I'm placing it equally or exactly where it's supposed to be. Again, always, always make sure that you zoom in so you can see exactly where things are being placed. If you would like, you can also name these if it's helpful to you, but it's not necessary. Again, I'm going to go ahead and choose the pen tool in here, navigate to where I believe the shoulder begins, which is somewhere around here I'll zoom out a little bit so I can actually see the overall shape again you don't have to be too specific you can just go ahead and click and click and click um, and you can choose uh, the anchor point tool you don't really need to finish the path if you're working with the uh, anchor point tool so you can just click right here um, and at this point I always like to zoom in like I said to make sure that what I'm editing uh, is being reflected using the anchor point tool it's only taking in one side so i'm going to go ahead and use the handle on the bottom and just drag it out a little bit more and drag it in towards the waist a tiny little bit more so you can obviously fiddle with these um, handles as much as you want you can go ahead and again right click transform reflect i'm reflecting vertically i'd like to preview what i'm reflecting and then I'm going to go ahead and click copy. Now I already have the sides ready. The next step for me would be to actually connect uh, both the left side and the right side. Go ahead and right click, join right click join so i can join the top and i can also join the bottom now another thing i didn't mention earlier was that make sure your guide is also locked so that way you don't move it around whenever you're drawing so uh, always keep it locked i'm going to go ahead and switch back to my anchor point tool in here and i'm going to zoom in at the bottom click and drag make my way to the top also click and drag to kind of match the neckline as well. Now we know that every single uh, product essentially will have a front and a back. So before we move on to creating the back side, I'm actually going to go ahead and choose the selection tool and just go ahead and edit, copy and edit, paste in the front. Now this two dimensional flat can easily be converted into a three dimensional flat because I've added a back and a front even though it's really difficult to see in here. So again, if you have been naming your uh, layers, go ahead and continue doing so. I'm going to go ahead and also lock these two layers in here so they don't interfere whenever I'm working on my sleeves. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose again the pen tool. I'm going to click from one anchor point to the next. Click and click. If you make a mistake, Command Z or Edit Undo, and it'll allow you to reselect that specific anchor point. Click, click, and combine. 
I'm going to again use the anchor point tool in here and just move it in a little bit. I'm going to allow for a little more space. Again, always, always zoom in so you can actually see uh, your work in here. Again, look at detail is very important whenever you're creating technical flats. I'm going to go ahead and overlap these two lines. Here, my flat is a little bit too flat maybe towards the shoulder, so I'm going to go ahead and use the handle to give it a little bit more of a volume, but you never want to make it looking sausage-like. So. <laughs> Now, if this was a two-dimensional garment um, that looked exactly the same on both sides, I can just go ahead and copy and reflect uh, this sleeve, but it looks like for this specific sketch, uh, we are actually working on a sleeve that is being folded. So I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, pen tool again to create this unique sleeve as well. Just for the record, these curves in here that you see, uh, we're actually going to create those towards the very end. Uh, they're just used as an illustration to showcase that uh, there should be a little bit of a bulk of fabric in that specific area. I'm going to go ahead and lock my sleeves as well so they don't interfere with the rest of the work I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and move on with the zipper in here. But another fun way to create the zipper is to actually use the rectangle tool. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the rectangle tool. And I'm just going to draw a long rectangle like this over the actual zipper, over the actual zipper that I'm uh, tracing. I'm going to make sure that I click under the stroke in here from your uh, control panel menu. If you don't have that turned on, make sure you have it from your windows. I'm going to click on the stroke. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and select dashed lines. You can adjust your dashes uh, to whatever spacing you would like. So I think three is what I'm looking for. And I'm also going to use this line tool to create the middle in here. I'm going to go ahead and lock this rectangle as well so it doesn't interfere with my line. Click and drag. Make sure it is in the middle. Now, because I was working with a dash line before this, I have to actually go back into the stroke again and unselect dash line. Next, I'm going to go ahead and unlock the rectangle that I created for my zipper. And I'm going to go ahead and click and drag over the dash line and the straight line. And I'm actually going to go ahead and group them. So that way, if I have to move anything later on, they're actually going to move together. So right click and group. Now, for this specific project, I've actually inserted a couple of symbols for you. So you don't have to create an actual zipper. Later on, after you're done with the flat, you can go ahead and choose the zipper in here um, and you can uh, insert it into your garment. Now the symbols, please don't add them because they will interfere with any kind of uh, future you know, fabrication adding or any kind of future uh, detailing you might want to add. So don't add these symbols until towards the very, very end. Uh, and then the last step for us is actually going to be to create uh, these pockets in here. So I'm going to go ahead and use the pen tool again. I'm going to make a little box in here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Use my anchor point tool to further manipulate these shapes. Now, if at any point you feel like you can't quite get to the shape that you're looking for with the anchor point tool, that's where your direct selection tool comes in. Go ahead and double click on the anchor point that you would like to move like this. Use the target point to curve, and then at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and play around with the handles until I get it perfect. Again, as soon as you've created one side, you can go ahead and right click, transform, and reflect onto the other side so you don't have to make them twice. Always make sure that you group everything, right click, and group, and then always have a copy of the original garment that you created. So I'm going to go ahead and select everything. Control C, Control V to copy or edit copy, edit paste. I want to show you why it was important for us to actually uh, create each individual piece 
in here um, it is important because now if i actually select the garment uh, and i choose the life paint bucket in here uh, i can select a color that i'm interested in let's say i'm going to go ahead and go with brown if i go ahead and navigate towards the actual garment i can just go ahead and click and drop and individually uh, color in every single one of these uh, this garment in here make the back side just make a copy of the front go ahead and ungroup this garment and begin to remove the areas that you believe are not going to be present on the back side for example the zippers the pockets of course the color and now because this is going to be the back side i actually have to select everything in here and i need to reflect it right click transform and I need to reflect the garment. I'm not gonna click copy, I'm just gonna go ahead and choose vertical and reflect. So that way the backside actually reflects to the front. If you'd like to change this and make sure you have a clean view, go ahead and choose the direct selection tool, double click on the anchor point and match it to the color in here. Double click, match. And again, remember we have two because we have a front and a back, so you have to move both of them. And there is my backside. Now, if you're wanting to create something a little bit more original, you can always use the fashion croquis that I provided you with in here. So you would essentially begin with the same process in here, acknowledge your layers, make sure you have your workspace on, uh, click on the area that has been designated for you to draw on, choose your pen tool, and you can begin uh, by essentially highlighting up. Go ahead and use a really long, uh, color in here but remember every single time you create something it always has to be uh, divided in specific pieces so that later on you can actually uh, if you'd like to manufacture it you can take it apart and do so so this is what the original final finished garment will look like make sure you have a description go ahead and add your logo if you have any um, in the next video i'm going to go ahead and show you how to create a really cool uh, pattern uh, so stay tuned for that and then always as a reminder please please make sure that you have uh, a copy of your original flat thank you everyone